This video is sponsored by Visible. Morning. Another day, another world test. Today, we're doing on the little flippy boy, the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3. And honestly, I kind of already feel like this is the most improved product that was announced and unpacked. We'll talk about that more later. If you're not familiar though, I'm gonna use this phone as my normal phone. We're gonna go throughout a day. We'll check on the battery at some point. I'll also take photos on it and some of its competitors, put those up on the screen so you guys can see how it does. And we'll talk about some of the features I like and don't like. But first things first, Fisher's joining me. I don't know that I want to participate anymore. He'll participate. Flipping out. First things first. <laughs> One vote down, one more to go. It's taking a long time to get my coffee this morning. Wait, there's coffee here. I, surely not. Hmm. <laughs> Dubious. Dubious. Oh, oh. Took a bait, but Coffee. Check. Hey, it's not as bad as I, I was worried it was going to be. So, okay. But to set the stage a little bit, Fisher and I are actually heading to Governor's Island, which is a small island just kind of off the coast of the other islands that we live on here in New York City. Long Island, where Brooklyn is, and Manhattan, which is its own island. And in 1664, after the British took New Amsterdam, which was the Dutch colony that was here and renamed it New York, they took the island and eventually renamed it to Governor's Island to be used for His Majesty's governors. So now that we got a ferry from Williamsburg, Brooklyn, where I live, here to Manhattan, we're now waiting for our next ferry, a much larger ferry, to take us to Governor's Island. I've never seen Fisher move this quickly. And there's a rope. Thwarted by a rope. <laughs> Okay, made it to Governor's Island. Now during the Civil War, this was actually used to house prisoners of war. And eventually though, it became an actual army base and a lot of the officers and enlisted people were all living here actually. And their families were here and it kind of became like a little town for them. Fast forward, eventually the Coast Guard was given the island from the army. And at a bunch of different times, pieces of the island were kind of turned into national parks. Eventually the entire island was given to the city and state of New York. Now it's kind of just like a public space. People come here on that short ferry ride for $3 and they picnic here or they check out some of the historic buildings that are here. And there's also sometimes festivals and concerts. I actually, last time I was here was maybe like six years ago for like a food festival. But while we're here, let's talk about this phone. The Z Flip 3 is the third iteration of flippable phones from Samsung. And there's a little bit of confusion because there was the Z Flip, which was one, the Z Flip 5G, and then the Z Flip 3. So the Z Flip 5G was kind of the Z Flip 2 in a way, even though it didn't add a lot of features, it, this is the three now. Now, as I said earlier, and also on social media, I kind of feel like this is the most improved product from Samsung's unpacked event. Now compared to the old Z Flip, we have a much more squared design. Some of that is potentially due to the fact that we have millimeter wave antennas now, which are on the edges, and those are flat rectangles. So functionally, it just makes a lot of sense. But personally, I just kind of like the straight edges. I like the way it looks. I also kind of like the way it feels my hand. I like it. Now the display is the same size as the Z Flip. It's a 6.7 inch screen, but it is using the newer AMOLED 2X screen compared to the regular AMOLED screen. It's 25% brighter than the old display. And in this case, it's also using LTPO technology. If you want to know, more about what that is exactly, you can check out my decoder episode, the explainer series here on the channel at the link below. Long story short though, it's a hybrid tech that lets the screen have a higher refresh rate. On this device, it's 120 Hertz compared to 60 Hertz of the Z Flip 5G, but also won't use as much power as normal 120 Hertz screens because it can dynamically change the refresh rate 
based on what's on the screen. So for example, if you're looking at a static image on the display, doesn't need a fast refresh rate, it might drop it down to save battery. And then if you're scrolling or playing a game, it'll bring it back up to that 120. And overall, again, that's supposed to just help with battery life. We do have the same UTG or ultra thin glass for the inside display, but Samsung says that they've actually added a new protective layer on top of that that makes it a bit more scratch resistant and stronger. We now also have stereo speakers that support Dolby Atmos, and I can confirm they do get pretty loud. In addition to that, we have a stronger hinge. Samsung calls it Armor Aluminum and says that it's 10% stronger than the last hinge, but there is just a slightly larger gap on this model than the Flip 5G, and that's probably due to the fact that the hinge is thinner. And so just physically, like the way that it has to close, it just has to kind of close with a, a larger gap. The device is also like a hair thinner and lighter than the Z Flip 5G, but for the most part, the specs are pretty similar. Now that's not to say there aren't meaningful changes. There actually are. Okay, and now I think it's time for lunch. Tacos. Boom, fried fish tacos and a carnitas burrito, is that right? Carnitas burrito. Starving um, actually. I am very hungry. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Baba fish taco. That is fresh. Is it good? Mm hmm. Yeah. Approved. Taco Vista with a Vista. Taco. Vista. Taco. Vista. <laughs> All right. And now let's talk about one of the biggest changes to this Z Flip from the last one the cover display. That cover display is much larger and frankly just more useful all around. The double tapping it wakes it and shows the home page with the time, which you can customize in settings. So I've been from the left will reveal all of your notifications. Now you can tap on these and interact with them in certain ways based on the app. But tapping on any of those options that I've tried, just tell me to open the phone. To me in a way, it kind of feels like a smartwatch display. You can also add widgets to the cover display in settings as well and get to them by swiping from the right on the home screen. You can choose from media controls, weather, today's schedule, next alarm, health, and a timer. And you can also reorder them as well in the app. I don't really use any of those widgets, if I'm honest, except for the notifications, obviously, and maybe like the weather or the music controls. Again, I kind of just end up using it like I would a smartwatch display. The one feature it does have that's kind of unique and definitely useful is that you can use it as a viewfinder for the rear cameras. So if you wanted to take a selfie, you could use those better cameras instead of the one on the front of the device. Something weird though that kind of annoys me about this is that if you ever do that with the device closed, all of the photos are automatically square and even does the same for video if the device is closed. And I'm guessing that it's something to do with because of the shape of the cover display, it's so you can center it and see more of what you're actually filming or taking a photo of. But as far as I can tell, there's no way to change that, which is, which is a little annoying again. You can though, however, open the phone, turn on the rear camera and tap the preview button to have it use whatever settings, aspect ratio, photo mode, video mode that you want, like portrait mode, for example. So that's at least an option. And again, useful. So this is for Jay, um, which is, under renovations right now, so we can't go in. But it's just kind of cool. It has this moat that goes all the way around it, and it's been a dry moat. In other words, it was never filled with water. They built it like this to just slow invaders down and make it harder to get in. So now we're in a place called Colonel's Row, which is where like the officers used to live. Getting very like college -y, like Greek Row vibes. Pretty, it's very pretty. A mask and PPE vending machine. At one side of Colonel's Row, there's a building called Liggett Hall, I believe. Um, it used to be a barracks. On the other side of that, where we are right now, this actually used to be a disused parking lot. 
they then converted it into Liggett Terrace. And it's got a bunch of like containers that are now serving coffee and food trucks are here and there's some places to get barbecue and hot dogs and all sorts of other stuff. It's kind of one of the main areas here on the island that people kind of just hang out. Now the cameras on this phone are at least on paper the same as the Flip 5G or the Flip 2 and even the same as the original Flip. I feel like I'm probably not alone at least in like being a little disappointed in that fact like kind of think the flip and the fold like should always just have the latest and greatest and be the top of the line, whatever. But I also understand that that's probably more the fold than it is the flips target demographic. And I'm sure that keeping the camera hardware the same generation over generation is at least one of the big factors in helping them get the price down. But as you can see in the video, there's not a big difference between the photos that I've taken on this device and the old Z Flip, which makes sense. But if there are any differences, that would have to come down to software if the spec sheets are correct. But any of that software stuff will probably eventually come to the older flip anyway. Either way, the cameras on this device should not be a big factor in your decision if you're trying to say come from the Z Flip 5G or the Z Flip. Now, I personally do wish there was a telephoto, just like have three different cameras. But again, a key goal for them on this device was getting that price down. Now, speaking of other similarities between this and the Z Flip 5G, this also has 5G, but unlike the Z Flip 5G that only had sub six, this has sub six and millimeter wave, which is great for today's sponsor, Visible. Now Visible, powered by Verizon, 5G included, is actually a super fast network, but you get the added benefit of not having to go into a store ever. And right now Visible has a bring a friend program. For each new Visible member you refer that signs up, you will receive phone service for $5 a month. Refer up to 12 and you can pay $5 a month for an entire year. Every person you invite will also get their first month of service for $5 a month as well. Check out the link below to learn more about Visible and thanks again to Visible for sponsoring this video. So these steps, um, are actually part of this little area over here that's called the hills and it's an area that they made out of these pieces of stone which came from an apartment building that used to be here they demolished and then reused the material to make this little area kind of cool Castle Williams behind me, and it's uh, protecting the Hudson River essentially, as well as the bay from any boats that were gonna come down either the East River from the ocean or right out here from the ocean behind me. Now I wanna talk about the folding benefits of this phone. Other than it just looks cool and it makes it more compact, are there any actual use cases for it? There are. Flex mode, as Samsung calls it, is not just the fact that the phone folds, but it's the fact that the phone folds and the hinge allows you to position it anywhere within that fold and it'll stay. And that's important because what it ends up actually doing is it kind of creates a built-in stand for the phone. So things like selfies or taking photos or videos just from afar even. And because you have the built-in like hand recognition, uh, if you show your palm to the camera, it'll start a timer and take a photo, but also things like watching content on that screen. You can actually just set it there and watch it pretty easily without having to like prop it up against something. And even video calls, which obviously is becoming a bigger part of people's lives nowadays more than before. But before, not all of the apps that you would use would know what to do when the screen bent. So Samsung actually added a new software feature in their lab section, which is like their experimental software section. And this essentially forces apps to move up to one half of the screen. And if they have their own flex mode panel, it's called uh, something that developers can add. Spoiler, not many have. That'll show below. Otherwise, Samsung has a generic, not terribly useful panel that just shows up there instead. But that's not really the point. That lab's feature just essentially makes 
the flip and flex mode much more useful across the board. And of course the design itself is a benefit to some demographics, right? Like people who, you know, are a little more fashionable than probably myself. But it is, it's, it's stylish, it stands out. It gets looks, it even gets questions. And it even comes in four colors. Cream, which is the one I have, phantom black, green, and lavender. And then three other colors that are exclusive to samsung.com in gray, white, and pink. Also something to note, the samsung.com exclusive colors have a black border around the phone, as opposed to the regular colors have the same color as the device around the phone. Also, Samsung confirmed to Fisher and myself that the samsung.com exclusive colors are matte finish, but all except for the phantom black one, which is matte, for the normal colors are glossy. Just because like all of that is hard to tell when you're looking at the photos on the site. So it turns out that on this island, things are only really open Thursday through Sunday. So we've kind of run out of places to, to go and we really want a beer and some food. So back off the island. We're going to Dorland's. Oh. <laughs> You've never even been there. You don't even know you should be making that face. If you like it that much, there's a problem with it. Fair. <laughs> Okay, we made it to Dorlin's Tavern, a place that Fisher lately has been coming to a lot, apparently. Yeah! And now we're gonna give it a try. But now is probably a good time to talk about the battery on this phone because it is 6.08 p.m. and I'm at 7%. Here's my screen on time of my usage for anyone who's curious about that. And that was for today, which obviously is like not your average day of use. Here, is my screen time of usage for another day that was a little more normal. Now regardless, not amazing battery life. Uh, I mean, the Flip 5G didn't really have great battery life. It has the same size battery. It's a 3300 milliamp battery, but we also now have the 120 hertz screen, um, which even though it is LTPO, still gonna use a bit more power. And we also have the obviously much larger display on the outside, etc. So I would say it's probably, probably similar battery life, at least of my usage, but that is going to not be terribly amazing. So just, just note that you're probably gonna need to carry a battery pack if you're gonna have a long day with the device or, you know, charge it at your desk at work or in your car. And speaking of, I'm now going to borrow Fisher's massive battery pack here and we'll charge the phone a bit more so that we can keep testing it out while we uh, have a drink. What am I drinking? You're drinking a Dorland's Bramble, my friend. <laughs> Get ready. It's great. Selling it hard. I'm scared. Oh, I may regret this, but cheers, bud. Cheers to you, friend. A good day, Governor. Governor. Okay, we've been hanging here and charging the phone. We are now at 100% battery. So let's continue. Let's take some night shots and some night video and see how that does. Okay, calling it a night. Now, we already talked about the battery, so we'll talk about that now. The other thing that we do need to talk about though, it's kind of important with this phone, is the price. Now sure, 
The camera hardware is similar, if not identical, to the last model. And specs wise, you're not seeing a huge bump, but the price is now $400 less than what it started at. And that's a big percentage too, if you think of it that way. And I just feel like for Samsung right now, this generation of folding devices, the Flip 3 and the Fold 3, it's less about adding a bunch of features and more about kind of getting people out of their mindset of what they think a foldable device is. So the whole stigma of them being fragile, they all now water resistant, including this model. They have a tougher protective layer on the folding screen, so they're more scratch resistant apparently. The hinge is stronger. They're trying to make the fact that they fold a little more functional. And again, the price being expensive normally is now coming down. And honestly, in that respect, I think they did a great job with this phone, especially that cover screen, like the design, like they added a lot of things to this device and yet the price is lower. And that's always a winning combination, right? Now I'll leave a link to the cheapest price that I could find in the description below. So check that out if you want more info on that. Also check out Fisher's Z Flip video coming out soon in the link below. Thanks again to Visible for sponsoring this video. You can check them out at the link below. Also subscribe and ding the bell to be notified of when I do new videos. I'm gonna be doing one on the Fold and also the uh, the Watch 4. So stay tuned for that. But there you go, if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to the word subscribe so you can notify when I new new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching. There's a lot of sounds on this island for it being like a island. Helicopters, boats, some sort of bugs that make loud noises. But that's not really... Helicopters today? I've never had more helicopters buzz over my head in an hour. <laughs> Goddamn whirlybirds.